is a book review of Barbarella. The only book I've got of Barbarella, there's been quite a few volumes of Barbarella over the years that have come out. Now, this one is from Humanoids, came out in 2014, and it's by Jean-Claude Forrest. Barbarella, and this one's adapted by Kelly Sue DeConnick. So, Humanoids there. Now, it's only 152 pages, fairly thin book, reasonably quick and easy to read. This was uh, 1962 it originally came out, and now contains the original Barbarella volume, as well as the sequel, The Wrath of the Minute Eater, and uh, features contemporary English language, adaption by the writer Kelly Sue DeConnick, Marvels, Captain Marvel, DC, Aquaman, etc. Now you can see there, I'll just show you the, uh, it's just standard glue, and it's black and white all the way through, you can see it's just black and white. Now I'm not certain if the originals were in colour or whatever, but obviously this version is in black and white, and well, it's got an introduction as well as a forward by Paul Gravitt, which is quite fascinating. And now it's slightly confusing, the reading this, it sounds like that, um, that it was changed slightly, that it's been modified a bit. So uh, obviously you've got the original one back in 62 and there was bands etc on Barbarella and of course there was the film, the famous film, which I've only ever seen half of, I must admit the film, a bit like the book, is a bit odd. And this is quite odd, it says obviously a, a cam, Feminism, etc. Uh, I'm certain that, yeah. But however, I just found the storyline completely all over the place. It felt to me when I was reading it that maybe it was just inten intention was to be like a dream, like Alice in Wonderland. That was my interpretation of it. Maybe I'm completely wrong on that. Maybe another person might come to this and say, you know what? That's nothing like that at all. Well, obviously there's no Alice in Wonderland, but however, there are queens and things and there's lots of guards and people who just walk around randomly and she meets another load of guards and there's other small little characters that are dressed up like rabbits and things. So to me, it sort of felt like an Alice in Wonderland. But obviously, as she says, my only weapon is love kind of thing. And yet there's a scene here where she's got holding a, uh, a weapon. So uh, it's slightly odd. There's not much violence or anything in this, but it's just... It's near enough also like a comic strip in the sense, of, well, it obviously was a comic strip, but that it sort of jumped after a, about three or four pages to another completely different scene, and then it was another scene, and then another story, and then hardly any real connection or coherence, as far as I could see, from scene to scene. So uh, there's, okay, there's some of the artwork there. Now, Barbarella, let's have a look. I don't want to show anything of particularly... And I can't say I'll give away the story because it, I'm not even certain there was a story, frankly. It, it just, characters keep turning up. He's got some more characters here, some more characters that just, and then you've got these flying creatures that appear and then, and then there's a story with like a, a doll that jumps out and bites her arm. You know, there's just, and then there's some bits of story where suddenly she's in a world where there's like thousands of Barbarellas and then she's not. And it's just like, to me, it did come across very much a dream, a dream sequence. It's like, here, poor little soldiers, dolls are so hungry, and you've got these dolls walking around, obviously. Uh, so it's very sort of strange one. And then cities that appear out of nowhere, and then she's off under seas, and then she's got floating fish all the way through this. And you've got this angel, uh, you've got big giants, and she she shoots one of them, and then she doesn't, and then, uh, you know what? But the artwork is superb. Artwork is absolutely glorious all the way through. It's, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, it just sounds like I'm dismissing it. No, I'm not, because, to be honest, I thought it was very well done. However, you've just got to treat it as like a free-flowing consciousness, sort of a constantly changing story, because I must admit, I didn't see that there was much story in here. You know, you've got this sort of thing. You've got uh, Bill. Now, Bill just appears out of nowhere. You've got this guy with B on his forehead. It says, B there. And obviously, you've got uh, old uh, Barbarella. And you've got this other creature who Timek has an idea. Timek. However, he just appears and sort of wanders through the story, uh, turns up here and then, and then there's this uh, other character that seems to be floating around and then he's not floating around and then he's this, he's that. 
I found it, and then she's going along one point. This is a great point. She's uh, floating down along a, a river on her back with a headless character. And it's, so to me, for this world, like I say, covered entirely with Barbarellas. Very, very, very baffling. I, I'm quite certain only the, uh, I won't say only the French can think up like this, because I'm certain obviously the, uh, the English, I mean, obviously uh, Alice in Wonderland. So uh, that sort of very, I mean, I'm not certain that anyone would come out with this sort of stuff now. I mean, it would be a really weird book if someone brought out a book, obviously not Barbarella, of course, but if someone brought out a, a sort of similar sort of just stream of consciousness where you're just sort of going from, it would be weird. There's some, what I say, character, there are so many characters in here. I think you would need uh, some annotation in terms of, or like a big back of the book with like a cast, character cast, you know, cast of characters. And and there's, there's, to be honest, there's not much sex. So if you're coming to this with a sort of thing, it's erotic or sex, I think really, well, if it was back in the original version, they've tamed it down massively because I didn't think there was much. There was one scene, I guess, that was somewhat slightly uh, could be, what's his name there, with, we've got, again, very surreal sequence with a, a fox, which I have to say is slightly odd, but no, really, frankly, nothing more than or less than what I saw on the, uh, recently watching uh, the Lovecraft Country, which I must admit I thought was superb series, but that's getting off the point of this book review. So you've got, the, it's just, I love this book though. Barbara, I thoroughly, this one of these books maybe I will definitely read a number of times, but I somehow suspect I will never come to an actual conclusion of what on earth it's about. Now, I don't know what other subsequent volumes were like, and I, I might certainly look around and hopefully uh, pick up a few of some other stories. Of course, these um, Barbara is now, I think, in on. I think it's Dynamite Comics. I always turn around and say Dark Horse or Image Comics. I think it's Dynamite. It's Dynamite. I actually haven't bought any of Barbara. However, there's lots of these Barbara meets Dejet Doris and all those sorts of things. I must think this, that starts going plain ridiculous, I think, when it, that goes down the route. Uh, but um, obviously, that's what people want. So that's what they get. However, this is the feisty French comic, Siren Barbarella. This was the original form of Barbarella. So. Uh, I must get, pick up a copy of uh, one of those Barbarellas as well, just to see uh, how different it is from this. I suspect very, very different. I don't think that uh, that you'd find uh, authors producing anything like this nowadays in any shape or form. So Barbarella, classic book from 2014 from Humanoids.